Oh, folks, this one is crazy. Let me read a few paragraphs from an article in Breitbart. And this one is just... <laughs> I mean, what do you expect, okay? They're warmongers. And in their warmongering, they're excited that it continues to be crazy because they get to use the people that they're encouraging to go to war as a scapegoat for their stupidity, right? Okay, here it is. This is an article that is in Breitbart, and uh, the title of the article is White House Blames Vladimir Putin for Weaponizing Food. Let me read the first few paragraphs. It is ridiculous. Here it is. The White House blamed food shortages across the country on Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday, accusing him of weaponizing food. President Putin is no kidding weaponizing food. That is what the White House National Security Council coordinator for strategic communications just said. If you know who he is, he's Kirby. He's kind of a joke, uh, John Kirby. And he goes on to say, let's call it what it is, weaponizing food. That's insane. That's crazy. And understand the fact that what they are saying makes absolutely no sense. The article continues to say Kirby appeared at the White House daily briefing to discuss the president's foreign policy agenda, which is blank, eh, what's going on, including his efforts to get grain out of Ukraine and into global markets. Uh, Ukraine and grain, you probably should consult some of the videos me and Dale have made because we've talked about that uh, major issue. Thousand of tons of grain are currently stuck in Ukraine as Russia has blockaded the Black Sea port from Ukrainian producers, which of course affects us, affects our ability to be able to produce food. That's insane. It's crazy. And the reality of it is the greatest beneficiary from food that's grown in Ukraine happens to be Russia, the Baltics, and the region around there. It has nothing to do with what is going on in the United States of America. And this issue of them continuing to blame Russia for all of these things is simply them looking for a scapegoat because they created the scapegoat. They have a deep state presence in Ukraine. They have been using the current president as a puppet from the beginning of time, right? President after president after president for many, many, many years. And they are using Ukraine to accomplish their purposes as they have forced Russia's hand to move. I am not a Russian apologist. I will never be a Russian apologist, but I'm a Bible apologist. And I understand what the Bible says concerning these things. And none of this should surprise us. Not one lick of this. They are using it as a scapegoat so that they can continue to destroy the economy. Kind of like a micro version of the black horse in the book of Revelation. Actually, kind of like a micro version of the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and unfortunately the pale horse, which means death. Folks, let's wake up. Let's understand the times that we are in. Let's recognize the fact that there is really a battle, a battle between good and evil. And the greatest of the wars we have ever seen in human history is the spiritual war that oftentimes nobody can see. It's time to engage and understand what's going on. Keep your eyes open. Keep looking up, folks. Jesus is coming soon. God bless you.